Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another As One event. Uh, this As One event is uh, really exciting, even more exciting than other As One events. Um, we're going to have a creative As One night. And I'm as excited as you, as this night has been led by Amelia and her team. Um, it's fantastic uh, to hear of what they have done. I haven't seen it yet, but um, we're in for a really, really good night. I'm believing that supernaturally through this event tonight, that people will be healed, will be blessed, will be restored, will find that rich vein of grace that God releases to us. So what is As One? As One is a bunch of people who have come together uh, in the call to Jesus' prayer in John 17, where he prays, Father, that they will be one as we're one. So As One is not about any one church, but about the church. And we come together to celebrate uh, each other and, and, to, and to work together and to live together as one. And that is what really about As One is about together, to affect our region, to see our region and our nation transform. So welcome to this As One event. Without further ado, I'm going to hand over to a very, very good friend of mine, a lady by the name of Annie Barr, who is one of our As One leaders. And uh, she operates in the Ministry of Business. Um, and as one, also, uh, we support and link in with the business sector because we really believe that as we bless business, that we can see our region transformed as well. So it's, it's not just the pulpit, but it's the marketplace. It's both places. So Annie Barr, very good friend of mine, she's going to lead us through this night, one of the as one leaders. So it's over to you, Annie. Thanks, Alan. Thanks very much. It's my absolute pleasure to do this tonight. And I'm really, really very excited about what God is going to do through this uh, evening. It's full of lots of stuff that uh, will uh, minister to you. I am absolutely certain of that. So it's my, it's my pleasure to introduce to you um, Amelia. Um, who's, who's the leader of the creative uh, as one team. And um, she is going to speak to us through her um, uh, video um, of what exactly, you know, creativity is um, and, and what, we, what it isn't actually. And um, talk to us about how God uses our creativity. And we don't always think that uh, we're creative, but hopefully by the end of this evening, you will and you will hopefully understand that creativity is maybe not what you thought it was. So it's over to, uh, to us to listen to uh, Amelia, see Amelia's video. God is creator and human beings are created in the image of God. By linking these two concepts together, we come up with the powerful idea that humans are made to be creators. Creativity is inherent in each and every one of us. It is a fundamental aspect of what it means to be human and essential to connect with God. God made each of us creative. Every one of us is serving a specific purpose in his story. We have the image of God inside of us, so we don't have to worry about having creativity. We definitely have it. Some people have been told that creative expression is restricted to an anointed group, but this is a lie. The enemy uses many different tactics to try and stop us from being our creative self. Some people were told when they were younger by a teacher or an adult that their art was rubbish or they didn't have a creative bone in their body. Again, this is totally untrue. A 
others have the fear of taking risks or the fear of being vulnerable. All of these things block our creative expression. Each of us has the ability to imagine and to see things in a new light. We have been given the license and the tools to explore, create, behold and praise. is a way of making sense of chaos and darkness, of finding new ways of seeing and being, and a means of bringing more goodness into our world. We want you to receive the freedom tonight to be the creative you were created to be. We are all on this planet to be creative, partnering with God. So we hope that that has given you an insight into how God sees you as a, a creative person and how creative you can be. And we hope that tonight, by the words that Amelia spoke in that video, that you'll be able to see and be able to understand that maybe there has been some things that have gone on in the past that have uh, stifled you and have kept your creativity locked up. And hopefully tonight, if you just allow yourself to open up and ask the Lord, what is it that he is saying to me? And how through this evening can I be open and set free for what it is that he wants me to do and how creative he wants me to be? And it's my pleasure now to introduce another one um, of our creative team and Karen Vickers. I've known Karen Vickers for a long, long time. We met in the 80s. And when I first met her, she's very creative and very arty. And I was totally terrified. I was terrified of of, um, of art. I was terrified of all of the things that I thought art was. And when I met Karen, she has that unique ability to be able to help people to really encourage them. She's an encourager. She's somebody who will uh, work with you one to one or work in a group to help you to unlock your potential and your creativity. She's run many, many courses and many uh, retreats over the years and I've gone to most of them. And they are unique uh, experiences. And hopefully Hopefully, um, through what she's talking about tonight, so you'll be able to um, understand and participate and maybe just see what your uh, role is in creativity, but it's maybe not what you think it is. So it's over to Karen's video. Have you ever been hugely impacted by a film you've seen or a piece of artwork? or maybe some music, a song, or a poem, or a book that you've read? I would think the answer to that for most of us, if not all of us, is absolutely. And it may be something you saw or heard years and years ago, but it stayed with you. The arts have huge power to impact, and more than that, to transform lives of individuals and society as a whole. And that can be a negative impact, depending on the source of that inspiration. But when God's people ask him, Lord, what do you want me to make? What are your plans? And Holy Spirit, will you breathe through what I'm creating? And when we co-labor, we work with him, on the creative projects, whatever genre that may be, then wow, the power to transform is immense. And God uses creativity as one way of bringing heaven down to earth. This isn't just a message to those who are involved in the arts, but to all of us. God as creator made us all in his image we're all creative beings, all in different ways. 
recently the Lord spoke to me about giving a clarion call to creativity to stir that up within us and during this time of lockdown many people have been breaking out creatively in so many ways doing things that they never thought they could discovering a deep hidden treasure of creativity within them. You might think, well, this doesn't apply to me. I've never seen myself as creative. Perhaps you've had words spoken over you that were negative, that have stifled creativity. And it's not about producing something technically brilliant when God prompts us to create something. Because when a child makes something for their parent and they just present it to that parent and say, look what I've done. A good parent doesn't say, oh, well, that's no good. A good parent takes great delight in their child's creativity and treasures what they've made. And it's the same with God when we go with his flow. When the disciples told Jesus that the multitude of more than 5,000 people were hungry, they wanted him to sort that out. But Jesus basically said to them, well, what have you got in your hand? And they had five loaves and two fish. And that wasn't enough to feed a vast crowd, was it? Until Jesus took it, gave thanks to God, broke it, blessed it, gave it back to the disciples, and it was their hands that he used to feed that multitude. As they distributed it, then the Lord did that creative miracle through them. And it's the same with us. The Lord wants us to ask him, Lord, what have, what have you put in my hand? What is it that you want to add to, you want to bless, anoint? And he works through us and he works with us. A clarion call is also used as a battle cry. And as Christians, we're engaged in a battle. Some of us know that all too well. And the Lord spoke to me a while ago about gathering creatives together and that those creatives were an army. And we're gathered together tonight. I could see the army of creators marching Creatives marching on the land, taking the land and advancing the kingdom of God. Kingdom-minded people following King Jesus, working with him on the mandate that he has given. And Amelia is going to talk about one such mandate. My passion is to inspire you into an ever-deepening relationship with the Creator the one who made each one of us, the Lord of sound, vision and time, the one who assists us and inspires us. Before I introduce our new project, I would like to encourage you to get a pen and a piece of paper and write down anything that the Lord speaks to you or any ideas you have or any, uh, anything that inspires you. Write it down and then you'll have it for later on. I would like to introduce the first As One Creatives project, the Creative Map of the UK. This project has many dimensions to it and tonight our creative team and a guest speaker will each be bringing you a different aspect of it. These will include the clarion call, declarations, sound, legacy, mental health and heritage. The Lord showed me in a vision last year, the map of the UK. And on this map, there were no names. Each village and town was represented by a landmark. I remember seeing the Herd Goyne Lighthouse in South Shields, the Tyne Bridge and the Angel of the North. What we would like to do is to make a virtual map of man-made landmarks, starting with the North East and then flowing out into the rest of the UK. We are inviting everyone to get involved 
with this project. It can be any way that the Lord leads you to create a local man-made landmark. When the creation is finished, take a really good picture of it, along with a declaration for that area, and at the end of tonight's session, we will let you know where to send it. These photos will then be put into a virtual landmark exhibition and also onto the virtual map of the UK. Each creation must also, as I previously said, have a declaration to go with it. We would like all towns and villages to be represented and declarations to be made over the whole area. You will hear more about these declarations shortly, what they are and how powerful they are. This project couldn't be more timely with monuments and statues here and in the US being in the media, but this isn't about politics. This is about heritage. Use your skills and creativity and spend quality time with the Lord in creating a local man-made landmark. Seek the Lord in writing a declaration that will bring new life to the area. We want to partner with truth and leave a legacy for the future. This creative map and the declarations are going to be very powerful. God wants to change this region and the nation and he wants to use creatives and remember that's each one of us and creativity. At a much later date, maybe next year, we hope to have an actual live exhibition of all these creative pieces. So once you've taken your photograph and sent it in along with your declaration, I would like you to keep the actual creative piece for a later date. Thank you. Thanks, Amelia. Um, now we want to um, declare together. We want to declare a declaration of creativity. And I want you to just uh, start, sit and repeat um, the words out loud, speak it out. It's really important to speak out wherever you are, wherever you, whatever you're doing right now, it just speak out those words that will bring life to you. So repeat after me. I am a creative person. I am a creative person. I was created in the image of the creator of the universe. I was created in the image of the creator of the universe. Therefore, creativity is a part of who I am. Therefore, Therefore creativity, creativity is a part of who I am. My family, friends and the world around me need my creativity. My family, friends, and the world around me need my creativity. I will no longer hide my creativity. I will no longer hide my creativity. In a dark corner. In a dark corner. But I will bring it out into the open. But I will bring it out into the open. And I'll allow the light of the master creator and I'll allow the light of the master creator to shine through me in unique ways. To shine through me in unique ways. I separate myself from the lies. I separate myself from the lies of all the I can'ts my mind has believed in the past. Of all of the I can'ts my mind has believed in the past. I repent and say sorry for believing them. I repent and say sorry for believing them. I declare I do have time to be creative. I declare I do have time to be creative. I do have creative solutions to problems. I do have creative solutions to problems. And situations that I face. And situations that I face. My brain was made to think creatively. My brain was made to think creatively. I hereby declare myself free to create. I hereby declare myself free to create. I just want to give you a, a, just a, a minute just to sit and think about what you've just said before I move on to the next section. The next section is going to be um, about looking at um, um, sound and how sound is very important. 
and Steve Apley is going to talk to us about our unique sound. And if any of you have heard uh, Steve Apley before, then you'll know he's a unique individual with a unique word for us in this season and this time about the sound. So I invite you just to come and just to, to watch and listen and ask the Lord, what is my sound? Hello, uh, my name is Steve Erdley. I'm just going to be giving a few thoughts on the resonance of landmarks. Everything resonates. All things vibrate, this is scientifically proven, from every living creature to all those things that we consider to be inanimate objects. Rocks, trees, animals, human beings, microbes, landscapes, cities, monuments and landmarks all vibrate and therefore they all have a sound. God created the earth through sound. He spoke it into being with a let there be light, but it wasn't until the Holy Spirit had hovered or it, the meaning in Hebrew vibrated, i.e. sung, over the essential elements being prepared to form the earth and the heavens. Today we are still living in the outcome of that creative process and as God created man in his own image, we are creators in the same way he was and is. Every resonance of every created object on earth is a consequence or a development of that first creative sound. And so when buildings or landmarks are planned, or whether when they're designed, created or built, this follows the same pattern of creation of the earth and heavens. We're creating objects which will have a resonance, they will resound. It seems to me that the specific resonance which a landmark has will depend on a number of factors. Firstly, the size, shape, materials and colour will all affect the actual vibration pattern and therefore will affect the sound of a landmark. Secondly, as with all sound, the time or period in which the landmark is built will affect everything because we're a living, developing human race and therefore nothing remains static. Time, period and understanding will also affect the sound of a landmark. But I believe the most important factors affecting the resonance of a landmark are the purpose for which it was designed and built, the person or team who designed it for that purpose, the many builders who actually set their hands to build the landmark, and on a day-to-day -day basis, the people who use or visit it. All will leave an imprint to a greater or a lesser degree of who they are, in the same way that our own individual sound will depend on the factors which make up who we are. In the same way that a town or a city has a unique resonance, firstly depending on its foundational purpose, why it was built, and then on the mix of people living there whose comings and goings will affect that living sound. The resonance of a landmark will firstly have a foundational sound, why it was built, and then it will have a living element which depends on those who use it or visit it. This models the process of God in creating the earth and it carries the same principles on a smaller, smaller level as creation. For we are made in the image of God and we are called according to his purpose. Thank you to uh, to Steve for that uh, that video. Um, now we're going to uh, look at the importance of landmarks. So um, Sandra um, Stewart is somebody that I've known for a long, long time, um, met many, many years ago, and um, Sandra's a call to intercession, a call to uh, to prayer has always been uh, well, it's been there for a long time, and recently she's heading up the intercessors um, part of Aswan and she's got a, a message for us about the importance of the historical aspects and the landmarks um, that are associated with history and the importance of what that actually means for us as people today 
Um, it's also uh, really important, she says, and we all know, to declare and to decree and to speak out. So Sandra's going to talk to us in the next two videos about the importance of, um, of speaking out, but the, also the importance of the landmarks that are around us as individuals in the Northeast area. This is my landmark. It's called Pontoc Pike Transmitting Station. It sits on a hill in Dipton. The hill, the mast and the antennae reach to 1500 foot above sea level, which is 461 metres. So it's very visible as you go around the northeast of England. It was erected in 1953, constructed by the BBC so that the people of the north of England could watch the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. We are transmitters. We transmit with our mouths. We speak life or we speak death. We speak blessings or we speak curses. We are to decree and a decree is an official order that has the force of law. When we decree something, we are making a declaration that has the weight of the kingdom of authority behind it. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Our decree is prophetic when it is sourced from our heavenly Father's intention. Holy Spirit has revealed God's will to us. We have the authority on earth to enforce the Father's plans through the agreement of our words. We are to remind God of his proclamations of scripture, as well as the promises currently in the Father's heart today. We do this from our standpoint of being seated with Christ in heavenly places. The decree was so violent when Joshua was instructed to take Israel and to march around the walls of Jericho. The sound, the vibration, the shout made the walls fall down. So strong was the decree of their shout. We've just started the decade of decreeing, the decade of the mouth. It's really important at this time that we seek the Lord to find out what his will is so that his kingdom can come and he will use our mouths and we will be vessels to proclaim what it is that he wishes to continue to proclaim at this time. Over the northeast of England, I decree shalom, the peace of God, wholeness, wellness, well-being, safety, happiness, friendliness, favour, completeness, security, prosperity, restoration, victory, contentment, tranquility, quietness, and restfulness over chaos. The increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. I speak health instead of sickness, life instead of death, prosperity against all lack in matters concerning finance and the economy, and that in these days of shaking, many will turn to Jesus. I declare, as lockdown eases and transition begins, a spirit of peace upon cities, towns and streets of this area of the north of England. I speak peace over unrest. I speak the revelation of the triumph of God's mercy over every individual, ministry, businessman, or marketplace leader struggling at this time and I declare his people will arise and take hold of the grace and strength 
he is releasing from heaven at this time. I declare and decree that his mercy and his grace will overwhelm every self-judgment, the judgment of others, every feeling of failure, despair, disillusionment or loss, that fresh joy, fresh strength and fresh life would come to them, positioning them for the way ahead. I call them into his presence to seek his face, that fresh vision will come, that innovation will come, that every shift, door and step he would release to them for this time will be both recognised and fulfilled. I speak to the Church of the North East. In the name of Jesus, I declare this is a season of revival and I call his people into a revelation of the shift of the season which has taken place. I thank him for the equipping of his church and the work of his spirit worked in individuals through this lockdown time. And I decree and declare in this fresh day a fresh urgency will come upon his people that every gift he has given both in the natural and the spiritual will be recognized and utilized and I speak courage and I speak boldness in Jesus name and I say Father God your will be done your kingdom come in Jesus name Amen Now we're going to move into a time of worship and what I want you to do throughout this time is for you to ask the Lord and let, allow him to minister to you through this song. This is a new song that's been written specifically for the purpose of this evening. It's the first time it's been uh, heard in public and it will minister to you. As I listened to it myself, it ministered healing and I ask you just to open yourself up and ask the Lord this, what is it that you want to do through this song, through this worship to, in me tonight, in this evening?
Sorry, I'm talking to myself there. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I hope that ministered um, to you um, as much as it, um, it ministered to me. Um, I'm going to introduce um, a really good friend of mine now um, called Richard. And Richard is, uh, has been a leader um, for many years. Um, and he is a man of um, creativity, a man of passion a man who's principled and a man who is deeply committed to whatever he does. And in this piece that he's gonna uh, speak to us now, it's about heritage, it's about landmarks, it's about legacy, it's about all the important things that surround us that maybe we don't even know. Maybe we don't even know the history behind it. Maybe we don't even know the significance of what's beside us in our region. My artwork is called Wagonway Lifelines, Scars of Strength and Beauty. And I want to tell you a bit about how I came to produce it and the journey I've been on. I go through a journey as an artist of discipline and risk and failure, and discovery and revelation. Whether I'm painting a large piece of public art or a more intimate portrait, the journey is the same. It's hard, it takes a long time. When you see the work of an artist, you can assume that they are somehow gifted or blessed or anointed, but this isn't true. What you don't see is the hours and hours and weeks and months and years of hard work and discipline and enjoyment that is uh, an investment behind each work of art you see. So the influence on this painting and collage has been the wagonways. The wagonways are the roots, the original roots created 400 years ago 
where coal was transported from the coal mines down to the River Tyne. And they still exist today. And a lot of them have been revived thanks to European funding and the commitment of local people. So my wife and I have been on lots of walks over this period. And we've started to just discover for ourselves the beauty of these routes, these wagonways. The one I'm walking down now is in Killingworth and it's famous because a hundred years ago George Stevenson tested out his railway, his engine, the rocket on this wagonway. And of course steam engines went on to replace horse-drawn carts in transporting the coal down to the river. So it was a struggle to start doing this artwork. I wasn't particularly inspired at first, but once I got over the blank canvas syndrome, I started to etch and trace and draw the roots of the wagonways down to the time. I did this dozens of times to get used to the kind of the map of our region via the wagonways. I wanted the discipline of knowing the roots like the back of my hand. I then started to scar the canvas, just like our landscape has been scarred by burning holes in it to reflect the coal extraction and coal mines. I scraped the wagonway roots and cut into the canvas with, with a knife to really start to scar the surface. Growing up in a Northumberland mining town during the pit closures and the strikes, the miners' strikes of the early 80s, and also living in Wall's End during the closure of the shipyards. In my artwork, I wanted to acknowledge the extraction of fossil fuels, the exploitation of land and people. I wanted to acknowledge the scarring of our landscape and the scarring of communities, the environmental abuse and destruction caused by mining and burning of fossil fuels. But this, of course, this acknowledgement causes um, quite a negative shadow over my train of thought and my processes as I, as I start to create this artwork. Part of the inheritance of coal mining on our landscape is that we have coal now in our soil. It doesn't naturally occur in soil. It, it's come from deep underground through mining, but it's littered everywhere. And the pit heaps were really toxic places. I remember in the eighties, sulfur fumes and nothing would grow on the pit heaps. But now look, very rich and fertile soil. So our negative inheritance has become a positive legacy. And I'm reaping the benefits year after year through rich and fertile soil. But as I walked again and again through these wagonways, I started to see and be awakened to a revelation of life and regeneration. The wildlife and natural beauty of our region became more and more apparent. Discovering red deer, long-eared owls, woodpeckers, foxes, squirrels, badgers, and not to mention all of the wildflowers and different types of tree. I started to see that although the scars are still here and always will be along the wagonways and the pit heaps, these scars are now signs of beauty and strength worn like badges of honour on our landscape. I declare healing of the wounds of exploitation on this region, that although the scars remain, they will be like stripes, colours, badges of honour, 
and stronger and more beautiful than in its original form. I declare that these wagon ways will flourish as channels of life and harmony. That the natural and the supernatural resources that flow in and out of our region will not leave it bereft, but will prosper our landscape and community. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thanks, Richard. I'm going to introduce Beth now, um, who is married to Richard. And um, Beth is going to talk to us about the um, importance, again, linking in landmarks and linking in uh, areas of the region that perhaps we know well, but we don't know the history behind. Linking in how she came to a realization of how she is actually creative, but didn't think that she was creative, wouldn't have said that she was very creative, but actually she's found through this process of discovery that she's very creative and she's been released in this process. And she's gonna describe now in this next section exactly how that's come about. Hi everyone. Before I tell you about my artwork, I thought it might be interesting to give you a bit of background as to how I became involved in the Aswan Creative Team. For people who know me, most of you will know that my gifting is admin and that I like structure and organisation and um, strategic things and I would never have considered myself to be creative until very recently. So last year I had the opportunity to experience creativity from a therapeutic side and it really opened things up to me and helped me to understand how um, healing the creative processes. So at the same time as I was discovering creativity through a therapeutic route, I met Amelia and Amelia saw something in me and encouraged that out of me to be creative. And we worked together on a few projects and it was really amazing. From that, Amelia invited me to be part of the Creative As One team, which I have to admit, I kind of laughed at first because I still didn't see myself as a creative person, but God's in it. And when he asks you to do something, it's worth trusting him and stepping out. And I really believe that I'm part of the team to help other people discover the healing part of creativity and especially to do with mental health. So that is the aspect that I will be mainly focusing on as part of the team. So when it came to thinking of a monument for the landmark project, it was the first time that I really had to think of anything on my own. So it took quite a lot of thinking in the background before I decided on Gray's monument. So I had absolutely no idea how I was going to represent Gray's monument. I haven't necessarily got any artistic skills. I'm not a great painter or drawer and when I thought about sculpting it I had to remind myself I can't sculpt. So it, it took a long time to manage to create what I have created. Um, Grey's Monument is a really busy place in the centre of Newcastle where lots of people meet and there's a lot going on. There's quite often demonstrations um, and markets and the times that I've been there I've found it quite overwhelming and it's made me feel quite invisible and quite small and I guess I started from that place and that feeling. So when I looked into the history of Grey's monument I learned a little bit about Earl Grey II and discovered that he'd been the second Prime Minister of the United Kingdom and that he was instrumental in bringing about the Great Reform Act of 1832 and this act allowed people who hadn't previously been able to vote, it allowed them a voice. So the people who had less land than the wealthier people, he enabled them to become part of the, the voting system. So that really spoke to me in terms of the little people having a voice. So going back to that feeling of being overwhelmed and kind of invisible in a large crowd of people, it was really symbolic of that. 
So the idea kind of developed from there about the small person having a voice and how important that is and then tying that into the fact that God sees us all the time, he, he knows us, he knows where we are and at any given point in time we have a voice and we're important so I wanted my artwork to represent that. So I got around to the idea of using Google Maps and Google Images and so my piece which we're just going to show you now is basically built upon Google Maps and it's symbolic of the busyness of the area of God seeing the one and of um, the importance of the here and now where we are now and the difference that we can make. the idea of writing the declaration on the streets that surround Grey's Monument which is the shape that I've used in my representation and the declaration reads Newcastle I declare you are a people with a voice that cries out for justice releases the oppressed makes provision for the needy and cares for the one While we're on the subject of um, healing through creativity, I'd like to share with you a story. In 1992, I first um, went to, I was asked to go to uh, uh, a day whereby it was going to be, I thought, going to be um, about peace. And it was Karen Vickers that was running it. It was in about 1990 to 1992. And I thought that peace was spelled P E. A C E, when in fact it was meant to be peace, as in a peace, P I E C E, or P E I C E, very different to what I thought it was. When I got there, I was expecting a nice little retreat, a time where I would be sitting and meditating, which I love to do, and um, and chewing over the word of God. When in fact it was full of people who wanted to make things people who wanted to sew, people who wanted to iron, um, people who wanted to make things. And I was sitting there getting angrier and angrier and angrier and enraged inside thinking I've been tricked into coming here. And by the end of the day, through a lot of patience and through a lot of encouragement from Karen and um, my friend Dorothy, I actually made this cushion. There you go. I want you to see it because that is, believe it or not, the only time I have ever sewed anything and the only time I've ever got anywhere with any sort of a patchwork uh, design. And Karen Vickers is probably responsible for the way it looks, actually, not really me. But the point I'm trying to make is that, you know, God can get us at any moment in time. He can he can ask us to do things that we have no idea why we're doing it. He can ask us to come along to something and we have no idea why we're there. And yet it's a pivotal time because at the end of that day, I made this. And at the end of that day, all of the rage, all of the anger that was inside of me was almost gone. And because I was able to take in what it was that I was doing and able to be encouraged in, in, in doing this, I was able to produce this. And so I, I show you this just to really encourage you, to really help you to understand that, you know, sometimes God will release you and will heal you in unexpected ways. And when I really analysed all of this, what really happened was when I was 14, I had a best friend and she was killed and she was killed by a drunk driver. And the last thing that we ever did together was a piece of art. 
the last we entered a competition together and it was a drum and it was a big it was a design on a drum and we did that and um, and I was so proud of it I was not great at drawing or art but I was really quite proud of it because in my head I had the design and then she was killed out, outright within you know two or three days of that and I was I became locked up I became this locked up individual and inside was all this rage to do with that incident. So when I was 30 years old, uh, from being 14, when I, was when I was 30 years old, 16 years later, all of that rage and all of that locked up stuff came out. So I'm telling you that, not to take over the show here tonight, but to show you that God can do anything with anybody. And we really don't un always understand why or how, but if we allow him to come into our hearts and to really minister to us and to set us free, we can be really free. I've never made, and I've no desire to ever make another cushion. I'm not somebody who loves sewing. I don't like it, but I see it. I see the symbolism of it, and I see how important and it was in my growth and my development and you've heard the same from Beth how she how she's been healed and set free from some of the things that she thought she couldn't do so what we're going to move on to uh, to now I just want you to think about that and maybe some of that will speak to you and you can you know send a message or or send a, a, any messages to uh, Facebook to us it's it's absolutely fine and we'll try and answer them but what I want to do now is talk about Karen um, it's been instrumental uh, in, in, in the region in relation to, to art and creativity. And Karen's going to talk to us um, about um, the importance, really, of, um, you know, decree and declare and call for action. She talked in the first video about the clarion call. And now we're going to hear a bit more about what all that means and what it is. When Amelia shared the vision God had given her of people making a creative map, I loved the idea, but I wasn't inspired artistically by our local landmark, which is called the Gibside Monument, until I looked at what it's actually called, and it is a statue of British liberty. And I love that. That's what God wants for all of us, liberty. That's what Jesus died to give us. So then I was more excited. The Apostle Paul wrote, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And he wrote several of his epistles from uh, being in chains, being in prison. And so he wasn't free physically, but he really knew what it was to be free on the inside. He was free to be who God made him to be and what God made him to do and because he was free he freed other people indeed his epistles will still strengthen and encourage and give us life today Jesus said you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free and if the sun sets you free then you are free indeed in making this this monument to British liberty um, using collage, bits of um, small pieces of magazine pages. And as I'm doing that, I'm also incorporating different scripture verses on the subject of liberty, like the ones I've just mentioned, for example. And so they will be embedded in that collage. And some may not be visible, just like when we speak out declarations, our words are not visible, we can't see them, but their impact is huge. There's also uh, words, scriptures that are put in the sky. And when we speak God's freedom, God's word, then it shifts atmosphere. There's also scripture about liberty in the land. And God heals the land and uses the declarations that we make to do that. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We declare liberty in this land in the name of Jesus. Liberty from all that binds and enslaves. We declare freedom from fear. 
addictions, sickness, poverty, materialism and false gods. We declare that we in this nation will be free to be the people who God created us to be. Now we're going to move on to uh, looking at a video that Amelia has shot for us um, in relation to uh, monuments again, landmarks. But this one is on the uh, is on the edge of the sea. It's um, it has got a lot of functions. It's not just a, a monument, but it's a lighthouse. It's got an important place in history in South Shields. But also, it, it, it stands the, the test of time because it's strong. Its foundations are very, very strong. It's been battered by the sea. It's had all sorts of weather thrown at it. But looking at it, you can see right up the middle is the strengthening pole that will, will not make that, that will not move. That monument, that, that, that thing there will never move because the strength is in the middle portion. And just like, you know, just like the, the, the Trinity, just like looking at the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, three together in one. And it's so important. And this, 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 this video will show you how important it is to have the core of who you are centered on the truth of the word of the Lord and on what he says about you and what he says about who you are and what he says about your creativity and how creative you are and who you are. So in uh, my vision of the creative map, this is a first landmark that I saw. And so as I live in South Shields, I thought that this is a landmark that I do for my creative piece. So I'll tell you a bit about the history of this uh, landmark. This amazing lighthouse survived the Second World War, which is amazing considering all of the aerial bombardment that went on in this area. Uh, because there was a lot of work going on in the dockyards and shipyards for the war effort so that it still stands here in Skate is absolutely amazing. The word groin dates back to the 16th century and it's French and it means stone structure and it stands on this plinth and the word herd comes from the herd sands which you see over here which are now called the Little Haven Beach. So it's fair to say that the herd groin lighthouse is actually this small pier and the lighthouse together. It's also one of the few lighthouses in this country which is actually a lighthouse and it also has a fog bell in there which chimes every five minutes but it obviously doesn't seem to be working today. So one of Francis Ridley Havergate's favourite prayers was take my lips and speak through them take my mind and think through it. So that's exactly what I've done for my creative piece, which I'm going to show you today. So this lighthouse forms part of the heritage um, in South Shields and the North East. And by partnering with God and making my creative piece and doing the declaration, I believe that I'm investing or choosing to invest in the future. So I'm actually leaving a legacy. So. This was an old breadboard that was destined for my wood burner and um, I looked at it in a new way and thought it could be my canvas so to speak. So I painted the background with um, blackboard chalk paint so that it was easy to write on with the chalk pens to do my declaration and then uh, I got my wood burning kind of engraving tool and um, I did the outline of the groin on it and then after that I painted it uh, to give it some colour. 
And finally, as you can see, I wrote my declaration around the edge. I believe it's our responsibility to sow into something generational. And I invite you to start thinking about a landmark near you, uh, maybe on your doorstep or at least in your locality, and partner with God to make something new. I decree and declare, River Tyne, you are a mighty, godly river of life. You are a powerful passageway, advancing prosperity to pervade the Northeast region. Amen. Your peace surrounds me Like air I can breathe No more distractions You are all I see God, I'll find you in the place Where your ocean tonight has given you some time to really consider how creative you are. I hope that we've given you a flavour of the different types and the different ways in which we can be creative, even though we don't even think that we are. I hope that we've given you some hope. I hope that we've given you a flavour of what it is that God is doing in this region. He is waking people up. He is wanting to you to express how creative you are and his creativity through you in many, many, many different ways, ways that you may never, never have taken into consideration. So with all that's going on tonight, we really hope that we've given you just a glimpse of what God is doing and who is waking up in this region and what he's going to do with this region in relation to us one, in relation to us being together as business people and as uh, the church, together is making a difference in this region. So if you want to get in touch, then we're going to give you some details on how to get in touch. If you want to send some messages, then we can, we can do, you can do that too. But we hope you've really enjoyed it. And I'm going to hand over to uh, Alan now, who will um, just close the evening um, with um, some prayer. Thank you so much, team. It's been an absolutely amazing and powerful night tonight. Um, I kind of feel the weight of Holy Spirit on all that's been released tonight. And I do know that this is just the beginning. 
of people finding new levels of freedom through creativity. Um, I just want to say that um, thanks to Amelia and her team, uh, Amelia who head up our creative uh, as one arm, I thank you for, for what you've, uh, you've done tonight and for your team and for all they've put in. I want to say thanks to Mark as well um, for doing all the techie stuff and making this happen. Um, it's been an incredible night. And the thing with Aswan is there is a breadth and a depth to the different aspects of how we express who we are together, but who God is. And the creative arm of Aswan is just one of those expressions. We have a, a, another arm, a worship arm of Aswan that Sarah, you've uh, heard tonight, is, is, is heading that up. And you can get involved with that if you want to as well. And Sandra, who you've seen tonight, heads up our, our watchers, our prayer and intercessors, arm of Aswan, and we've got people praying across the region. We are stronger together. <laughs> and God has a plan for us as his ecclesia, as his church, as his people. Um, not through striving, but just through being who you are. And through us being that together, there's a strength that is brought to our region and to this nation and to the nations. So thank you so much for tuning in tonight, for listening. Thank you for those who are going to be watching a bit later, um, who've not been able to watch live, but we know you're going to be blessed when you look at this. We bless you as well. Even though you weren't with us live tonight, we still speak a blessing over you. And we speak a blessing over every landmark, over every area of our region, over every town, over every city. We just, we speak blessing upon you. We speak God's life into you and the grace of God to be upon you. So Father, we thank you for every single aspect of our region. We thank you that you, huh, you are in the history and you're in its future. We thank you that you have plans for our region. And we thank you that our region will prosper and our region will deepen in its understanding of who you are as we stand together as one. We pray this and thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. We're going to just put some more detail up and then I think we're going to close in a minute or so, but we'll put the detail back up again. If you want to contact us, feel free to do so with the creatives, but any other aspect of as one as well, drop us an email and we'll get back in touch with you. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.